Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at simplifying ratios. So simplifying ratios is very similar to simplifying fractions. We need to look for common factors or ideally the highest common factor to simplify our answers. So we're also going to be looking at how to do it with decimals and with fractions, with different units and getting um, ratios in the form of 1 to n. So if you want to skip ahead to some of that, that's absolutely fine. So we'll start off nice and simple. So like I said, we treat these the same way we would do when we were simplifying fractions. 4 and 10, we say to ourselves, what number goes into 4 and 10? So in this case, there's only one option, which is 2. So we divide both sides by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Key thing... If you rewrite your answer somewhere else on the answer page in the exam, for example, make sure it stays in that order. If you swap them around, you'll get the answer wrong. Okay, so if, as long as you're simplifying and keep everything the same, uh, so the same side, you'll be absolutely fine. Exactly the same thing if we have three numbers. If we have three numbers, we're still after a common factor, but this time of all three numbers, or ideally the highest common factor. So you might already be able to spot the highest common factor is four, so uh, you divide 16 by 4, 20 by 4, and 32 by 4. That's absolutely fine. I'm just going to show you that if you can't spot the highest common factor, it's not an issue. So what most people will do is they'll go, they're all even numbers, and I can half them, which is absolutely fine. So let's do that step. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and divide by 2. So I will have 8, 10 and 16. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. Two goes into all three of those numbers, not a problem. But if you look here, 8, 10, and 16, there is a number that goes into 8, 10, and 16. Again, it's two. We can half them again. So we divide by two, divide by two, and divide by two. So that leaves me with four to 10. Oops, sorry, we're talking about to 5 and then 16 divided by 2 leaves me with 8 so I'll have 4 to 5 to 8 and like I said if you spot the highest common factor at the start is 4 16 divided by 4 is 4 20 divided by 4 is 5 and 32 divided by 4 is 8 so ideally use the highest common factor but if you can't spot it but you can spot a common factor just do it in multiple steps just keep going until you can't go anymore so then the nice simple ones what happens when we get to decimals? Now, the best thing to do when you have decimals is to make them into whole numbers. So the best way to do that in this case, if you've got 0.3 and 0.9, if you times them both by 10, you'll have 3 and 9. So let's do that. So we've got one decimal place, so I'm times them by 10. If I times both of them by 10, whatever you do to one, you must do to the other, by the way. Otherwise, you get into a bit of trouble. So 0.3 times 10 is 3. We just move that decimal place over. 0 0.9 times 10 is 9. And then it's exactly the same steps as we did here. We just look at 3 and 9 and say, right, what's a common factor? What number goes into both of them? And you might already be ahead of me. 3 will go into both of them. So we divide by 3. So I'm left with 1 to 3 as my simplified ratio. Same idea with this one, but slightly different. I've got 0 0.5 and 0 0.45. I want to make them all whole numbers and then simplify it. But this one here has two decimal places. This one here only has one. So to make this into a whole number, I'm going to have to times it by 100. And I'm going to have to times this one by 100 as well because I times this one by 100. Keeps it the same. So 0 0.5 times 100 is 50. And 0 0.45 times 100 is 45. And they're now whole numbers. Now we can do the same thing we were doing here. What number goes into 50 and 45? Hopefully you can spot that 5 does, because they're both in the 5 times table. So I'm going to divide both of them by 5, which leaves me with 10 to 9. Okay, so that's what you can do with decimals. Convert them into whole numbers, and then simplify them like you do normally. Fractions slightly different. All this means is 2 divided by 7. Okay, so I don't want it to be divided by 7 because if it was just a 2, it wouldn't be any problem. So I'm going to get rid of that 7. To get rid of a divide by 7, all I do is times by 7. 
So if I times this by 7, 2 7 times by 7 just leaves me with 2. But just like on these, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I need to times this side by 7 as well. So 4 times 7 is 28. This is now my ratio, and I can simplify it like I did here. What number goes into 2 and 28? Well, 2 does, so I can half both of them. So I have 1 to 14 as my final answer. What do we do then if we have two denominators? Not a problem, we do exactly the same trick. Here I was divided by 7, so here I'm divided by 5, so I'm going to times by 5. But if I do it to that side, I must do it to this side. So 3 fifths times by 5, divided by 5 times by 5 gets rid of it, so I'm just left with 3. And then 1 quarter times 5 leaves me with 5 over 4. If you're unsure of that step, have a look at my multiplying fractions video, and that will explain how you do that. So I've now sorted this side, I'm now going to sort this side. I'm dividing by 4, so I'm going to times by 4, and of course I'm going to do it to both sides. 3 times 4 is 12, divide by 4 and times by 4 gets rid of it, so I'm just left with 5. So 12 to 5 is the number that goes into 12 and 5, no there isn't, so that is simplified, I can leave it like that. Okay, so that's how you do it if you have fractions. Okay, let's have a look at some unit stuff. So if you have different units, you must convert them so they are the same before you do any simplifying. So this one here, I have six pounds and 48p. I'm going to convert the six pounds into pence, which is 600. And then obviously I can keep the 48p the same. The reason I do that and make that bigger is because if I converted that to pounds, it would be 0 0.48. And then I'm left with a decimal and then I have to make it into a whole number. And it's just, it just makes the process a little bit longer. Whereas if you convert that to a bigger number, we have whole numbers straight away, and you can just start the simplifying process. So, same as we do before, we look at, um, look at the 600 and the 48. What number goes into both of those? Well, hopefully you might be able to spot that 6 does. So if I divide both of them by 6, that will leave me with 100. And then 48 divided by 6 uh, leaves me with 8. So the number's got a bit smaller there. Keep going if you can. So 108, what number goes into both of those? Well, 4 does. So I can divide both of them by 4, which leaves me with 25 to 2. Can I go any further? No, I can't because 2 won't go into 25, so I have to leave it there. So that's my simplified ratio. Same here, I've got... 3 meters and 78 centimeters. I'm not going to convert that to meters because I'll be left with a decimal. I'm going to convert that into centimeters. So 3 meters is 300 centimeters. And then obviously I keep my 78 centimeters. Again, we simplify. So what number goes into 378? Bit tricky to spot the highest common factor here, uh, but try halving them if, as a starting point if you wish. But the highest common factor is in fact 6. So 300 divided by 6 is 50, 78 divided by 6 is 13. Again, I can't simplify that any further, so I just leave it there. Different units again, millilitres and litres. I'm going to convert the litres to millilitres, so um, I'm not working with decimals. So we've got 600, and there are 1,000 millilitres in one litre, so that's going to be 4,800 millilitres. And again, I start simplifying. Both end in zeros, so that's a nice one to start with. I can divide by 100, which leaves me with 6 to 48. Much nicer. What goes into 6 and 48? We can divide by 6, both sides, which leaves me with 1 to 8. And we're done. Obviously, it's 1. I can't go any further. Days and hours, then. Well, there's 24 hours in one day, which means there must be 48 hours in two days. And of course, I stick with my eight hours there. So now both in hours, and I can start to simplify what goes into 48 and eight. Well, eight does. So I can divide both sides by eight, leaving me with six to one. Okay, so that's how you do it with units. Convert them so they're the same, and then you can simplify. 
And the last little thing to have a look at here is writing a fraction in the form 1 to n. This tends to trip people up in the exams. Uh, they tend to think it's more complicated than it actually is, but it's nice and easy. So I've got the ratio 3 to 5, so I'm just going to rewrite that down here. It needs to be in the ratio of 1 to n. You need to work out what n is. Well, how do you go from 3 to 1? Well, I divide it by itself. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Easy peasy. Because I divided that side by 3, I must also divide that side by 3. And this is where people get confused. They think, I can't do that. It's not a whole number. It's not right. Don't worry. Leave it as a fraction. 5 divided by 3. So 5 over 3. You can write your answer as a mixed uh, number or as a decimal, but my advice is just leave it like that because all you do is potentially run the risk of making a mistake further on. That's unnecessary. That will get you the mark. Leave it like that. Same thing for this one. I've got the ratio of 13 to 7. It needs to be in the ratio of 1 to n. We've got to work out what n is. Well, how do you go from 13 to 1? I just divide by 13. So do the same thing this side. And again, write your answer as a fraction. 7 over 13 gets you the mark. Okay, so hopefully that explains a few things around simplifying ratios. Thanks for watching, guys.